Hey guys, it's the middle of the week, which means it's time for question of the week. Now the question this week comes from Bill, but before we discuss what that is, I'd like to say thank you to Mitch and Gary over at Frontier Specialized. They were delivering a wood processor to our shop at Western States. Mitch is a subscriber and he said, hey, I know who you are and gave me a hat. So thank you very much. Uh, black and orange is actually like my favorite new color combination. My new toolbox is orange and black, by the way. It also has on the side, Shake Hands with Danger, which I'm assuming he's alluding to the hilarious early 80s Caterpillar training, safety training video. If you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. It's quite funny. A little graphic, but it's it's fictional. It's not real graphic. It's a movie, folks. But let's get to our question of the week. So this is from Bill, and it says, Hey, Josh, I can't thank you enough for your informative videos on YouTube. You're truly an extraordinary content creator for YouTube. I was looking at your video, why won't this engine start? I am looking at purchasing a 2002 Monaco Safari RV with a Cat 3126. The owner says it needs a new fuel injection pump. I asked him about it and he said that the maintenance shop, k r Mechanical, said it needed a pump. I can't find a listing for the shop, but that is neither here nor there. I thought I would start by trying the IAP solenoid block of tool, Cat 209-2368. You stated in the video, but you never mentioned the IAPCV part number. You only said it was about a $200 part. Is the part number 122-5053? Before I go look at it, I want to have my ducks in a row. Thank you, Bill. So first off, yeah, those are two things he's mentioning there. The first is the block off tool. Now the block off tool is not $200. The block off tool is I think $40 and that 219-2368 part number is the part number of the block off tool itself. And what it does is it basically bypasses that injection actuation pressure control solenoid, which is the round top style 3126 Huey pumps. There's also the rectangular top ones, which those do not have an external solenoid. Those you cannot replace. So the part number he was listing there, that 122, what is it? 5053, that is what appears to be the injection actuation pressure solenoid part number on uh, the internet. I don't ever list part numbers generally for cats like a, an actual engine part number because they're always updating and changing and there's actually a remand version of this and a non-remand version of that solenoid. So, but from what I saw online, that is the injection actuation pressure control solenoid. But if you're gonna get one, call your cat dealer and tell them the engine serial number and they will give you the correct serial part number or the correct part number for your engine serial number. But I think his main question is not necessarily the part number, but, why isn't this 3126 starting? So let's answer that question. So having read that email, the first thing if you're familiar with cat engines, you'll notice is that they say it needs a new fuel pressure injection pump or fuel injection pump. 3126 don't have fuel injection pumps, folks. They're Huey engines, which means they use high pressure engine oil to fire the injectors. Now that is, I'm guessing the current owner saying it needs a fuel injection pump not knowing that it doesn't have a fuel injection pump, or maybe the mechanics at whatever the name of the company was, I'm not criticizing them, I don't know who they are, but said it needed a pump, and then they think it needs a fuel injection pump, or maybe Bill thinks that, I'm not sure. Bill does sound, does sound like he knows what he's talking about because he's talking about the block off tools and stuff, so I'm gonna assume it's the current owner saying that. So what generally on a 3126, why won't it start? Well, these are electronic QE engines, and in my experience, it's usually one of three main causes. Now, if this was brought to my shop or I went out to look at this RV, what would I be checking? Uh, first off, and this will be difficult for a non-dealer mechanic to do, but I plug into the ECM. What codes are going on? Do we have any active faults? Do we have log faults? And some log faults don't matter but some do very much. So if it had, let's say, all six injector current faults, that's usually 100%, close to 100% uh, accurate diagnosis that that ECM is bad internally. Now, can the ECM be the cause of it not starting but not be a bad ECM? Well, yes, you could have a wiring problem. Maybe the ECM's not getting a pin 70 uh, volt battery voltage to say turn on, or maybe it has a bad ground or bad power to it. These are all good questions, but that's one side of the system is check if you can get check engine lights on this thing. If you don't have a way to communicate with it, try getting flash codes by using the cruise control set resume switch to get blink codes and then see what those are, if you can get them. If you crank it, are you getting an RPM signal? 
Generally, the engine ECM is what supplies the tack with an RPM signal. If you're not getting one, that's usually a good indication that you have an electrical problem. Whether it's the ECM or the wiring, you would need to determine yourself. Okay, so the next system you'd probably want to check would be your fuel system, and this is probably the easiest one to check if you're not a dealer mechanic, because generally all you need is a fuel pressure gauge and probably a test port. Generally, if you have a secondary fuel filter, which is one on the engine itself, usually that's We'll have a test port there you can check. And while cranking, these do not generally need a lot of fuel pressure. I've seen them start actually with zero fuel pressure. Generally, you want at least 10 PSI, and I think 25 is optimal. But if you're getting more than 10 PSI of good fuel pressure, not full of air, you probably have enough fuel pressure for this to be starting, which leaves us with the third and probably the hardest one to troubleshoot if you're not familiar with the systems, and that is your Huey system. Now, this mechanic company said it needed a pump already, and they probably made a Huey pump. And I've seen tons of Huey pumps replaced when they didn't need to be replaced because it's 3126, and people in general are not great at troubleshooting these systems. Let's theorize that maybe it does need a Huey pump, or let's say that, let's just say that the Huey pressure is not very high. Huey injectors generally need to be between 700 and 800 psi of Huey pressure, that's the engine oil pressure fed to them, to even fire. Now let's say that pressure is not building. Let's say it's only building to 100 or 200 PSI. Can that be the pump? Remember that a pump is required in a system to build pressure. However, the pump provides flow. You need a restriction to build pressure. Now the Huey system is not extraordinarily complicated and there's only a few components to it that are generally the cause of any low pressure problems. The pump itself, of course, all systems that build pressure have a pump to provide flow. You also need a restriction. Now the pump itself is not a very complicated part. It is very expensive though. I've seen lots of pumps thrown on systems that didn't fix them. Now if it's the round top style Huey pump, you can actually replace the solenoid, which was what he was referring to. And about 50% of the time it is the driver or solenoid and the other 50% of the time it's the whole pump itself. Now the pump itself does come with the solenoid, but if you replace a $200 part instead of a $1,500 part, it's better to do the cheaper part, right? Now, those are not all the components. Remember what I said, a pressure system needs flow and it needs a restriction. Well, what's the restriction? The injector seals, actually. They're what seals most of that system. And I've seen many times where the injector O-rings, generally the top one, will blow out and you'll lose Huey pressure. The pump's providing flow. The ECM's doing everything it's supposed to do to tell it to build pressure. But guess what? It doesn't matter because the injector seal's blown out and you don't see a leak though, unless you pull the valve cover. So if you can bypass that solenoid with the tool and you're still not getting Huey pressure, pull that valve cover, crank it. And if you see one of the injector seals flowing a lot of oil, you know you probably just have injector seals. That is your problem. Those are generally the ECM or electrical, the fuel and the Huey system are universally always the cause on a no start. Now, of course, there are weird problems. I've seen it before where the timing sensors are. That's a rare one though. And in general, like I said, it's those three systems you need to start looking at first. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave you guys with this and thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Joshua Deptive Channel and it's the middle of the week. Oh shoot. Move my microphone here. They were actually, what happened? Oh my goodness, what's that? Is that something weird? Let's go get you a new water bottle. I'd like to say thank you to Mitch from, ah, okay.